Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome to episode 13 of Network Chat Programming. So last time we took a look at the receive method and how we would receive packets of data. And today we're going to take a look at, I guess, the counterpart to that. And that is, of course, sending data. How does sending data work? Okay, so um, I did mention last time that one of the things that would be, uh, I guess, happening is that the receive method wouldn't just be implemented normally as it is here. It actually requires another counterpart, and that is, of course, a thread because we want to receive multiple... Well, we can't... Sorry, we don't want to receive multiple packets, packets at once, but we do want to be able to receive packets while doing other things in our application. We don't want our whole application to freeze while, you know, while actually... um, How do I say this? We don't want our whole application to freeze while we're waiting for data to actually flow through into our program. So, um, that's why we need a uh, we need we need to actually implement a thread for that. We the same thing has to happen for sending. Okay, we want to be able to send on a different thread, not because we have to, but because it's more efficient this way, and because it's actually uh, it's just the way that we do things. Because it um uh, well it it'll, it'll become more apparent. So um, the other reason that we uh we need a um we can't implement a thread straight in this receive method is because um there's only gonna there's only ever gonna be one like receive call happening at once, okay? We, we don't want to be able to receive on multiple occasions like the same data and stuff, that's a mess. And also you can see that this private, uh, that this uh, receive method returns a string, okay? So we're actually taking data from it. Whereas the send method is more or less abstract, right? We just say, okay, send this data. I don't care what happens with it. Just send it, yeah? Just send it. Um, whereas uh, with the receive method, we actually want to be able to store this data. So we'll make a new method here called send. So private void send. And it's gonna take one para one parameter and that is an array of bytes, okay? So similarly how we actually uh, received an array of bytes here, we also want to send, sorry, we also want to send an array of bytes, okay? So to do that, um, we should create a new thread, a sending thread. Now, the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm actually just gonna create a thread object at the, at the top here. So private thread, and I'll call it send because it's gonna be our sending thread. So private thread send. Now, over here we'll hit, we'll hit up send equals new thread, and then we'll, we'll call it something just cause it's, well, just so we can identify it in the debug, in a debugging in case something goes wrong. So new thread send, we'll call it send. And, uh, and of course inside thread here, we need to implement a method called run as you all know. Well, you should know. Again, I might do an in-depth on thread. And make sure we start the thread, of course. Okay, so thread.start. Alrighty, awesome. So now, um, oh, actually, sorry, we can't do that here because, uh, of course, we uh, actually did make an object out of it called send. So send.start, okay, cool. So now that we've done that, we want to actually convert this byte of data, this byte array of data into an actual datagram packet. Okay, so here we received a datagram packet, now we're sending a datagram packet. This stuff is pretty, pretty simple. So datagram packet packet equals. Now, our constructor here is going to be a bit different than it was over here. Here, all we did was we received data, um, well, or, or more or less, we, uh, we applied the data of the received packet into our data um, uh, array here, byte array. And of course we received, uh, you know, a maximum of 1,024 bytes of data. So one kilobyte of data here. Now over here, we need a few more arguments, okay? Remember when we're receiving, we already know what port we're receiving at. We know all of that stuff. And the reason we know that is because we've created a datagram socket with the port here, okay? And we don't care what the address is, we're just receiving. But if we're sending, we need to be able to send to a specific destination, okay? So, uh, think of it as this way, right? Let's just say, um, Let's just say you're receiving mail, right? You don't really need to know anything about that to receive. You don't need to know anything about anything really to receive mail, right? The person who sends the mail does have to know, of course. But you just sit at your you just sit at your house and you receive mail. However, if you want to send mail, or if you want to send a reply or whatever, if you want to send mail, you you can't just know nothing. You actually have to know the location of where you want to send that mail to. Okay. So the same thing happens over here. We can send our data, which is this byte array over here. Uh, we'll send, you know, data dot length, the same thing as we did here, so that we send the, uh, the the data in its entirety here. But we also need an address as to where we want to send it to. Okay, so we need some kind of address, um, and I think we've got a uh, IP over here. Now, 
when we connect to a server in this login window, um, and I'll quickly just uh, comment this line out so that I can run the application and show you guys. When we connect into this uh, login screen here, this IP address, right, this is going to be the IP address of the server IP, okay? So it's gonna be the server IP, and the port is going to be, well, whatever port the server is running on. So we just enter a name, to distinguish ourselves on the server. Then we enter the server, the, the server's IP address and the server's port, okay? That being said, we need to enter those dot, those fields in now. So we've entered them into the, uh, into the login form, of course, we've logged in. And now we want to uh, basically, you know, we, we've set them here to be global variables by, uh, well, class, well, not class variables, global variables, I guess you'd call them. Um, even though they're only global in this class, but we've made uh, we've made variables here. Let's say port and address. Now they're strings at the moment, um, and I believe we oh, okay. An IP is our INAT address, okay, which is our official IP address. So we'll simply send this to IP and port, okay, and that's literally it, okay. Now in order for this to work, data has to be marked as final, okay. So go ahead and do that. I'm not going to bother explaining why. Um, that needs to happen, but it does. Okay, and the reason, well, roughly the reason is because this is actually an anonymous uh, in a class. Okay, um, that's essentially why uh, to basically prevent stuff like um, concurrency issues between uh, these two different inner and outer classes. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that too much. All you need to know is that it does have to be final. Um, now, now that we've actually created the packet to send, we should send it. Okay, so we'll just type in a packet here. Oh, sorry, socket dot send, and then the packet that we want to send. Okay, so socket is of course re re referring to our datagram socket, which of course is our remember connection to the network. And then we're simply sending the packet. And of course the packet contains details as to where it is sent. Because if you've done networking or something, you know that of course the header of the packet of course contains the IP address, the destination IP address, and the, um, the destination port after which of course the router or, or whatever you're using converts that into stuff like MAC addresses and sends it around the network. Now, this throws a uh, an I/O exception, so you have to make sure you handle that. I'll just hit surround by try, surround with try catch because I'm not going to type it out, but that's what it will do. Okay, so we're, we're catching a possible I/O exception here, and that is it. Okay, that's actually the end of this send method. So you might be able to see why I'm saying that it's a lot easier than receive, um, because really it's just it's really clear where we're sending it to. Okay, we're making a packet, we're filling it with data here, we're giving it an address of where we want to send that data to, and then we're sending it. Yeah, pretty simple stuff. Whereas with receiving, the thing that might confuse people, I imagine, would be like like we're receiving. Okay, we're receiving data, but how how do we know where? Like, how do we know what port to receive it from? How do we know what address to receive it from? Of course, you have to realize that the address we don't need to know at all. Like, who cares? We're just listening for we're just listening for any packets of data on a port. The port we do need to know, of course, and that is specified when we create the actual datagram socket. Okay, so every socket, of course, has its own individual port. Now. This is pretty much it, okay? That's the receive and the send method. Next time, we're gonna take a look at uh, creating a, a really quick server and then trying to send data back and forth. And then we'll move on to uh, blending it in with GUI and adding um, other things that uh, that actually take this to a whole new level. And that's not just sending messages, but sending things like uh, connections, uh, you know, basically um, dot, uh, other data. So not messages, stuff like, uh, you know, so-and-so has connected or I've lost connection to the server or stuff like that. But thanks for watching this episode of Network Chat Programming. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.